Hello and welcome to Orient Today. I'm Joe Johnson and I am joined by my friend and co-worker Joey Tysick. Welcome back. I know, it's my second time on. They had to, <laughs> I, I was telling everybody before, they had to call in the sixth man today. That's right. <laughs> and you're dressed up for, you're doing the concert tonight, right? Yes. Yeah, talk about I don't the concert. Know, I don't know what the weather is going to be like, but I always wear shorts because I'm moving equipment all over the place. Right. But it's supposed to clear up. It's supposed to rain all day today, but then uh, right around 4 o'clock it's supposed to clear up, so we should be good to go. Yeah, the concerts are kind of winding down. Yeah, we only have two more left. left at Wildwood. Yeah, yeah. So I, it's uh, been a, a busy season, but the, the concerts have been good. I, ha I wrote down the last gazebo concert is on uh, August 30th, mm -hmm. One Ton Trolley, who are awesome. Yeah. And the last Wildwood concert is August 22nd. That's next yeah. week, right? Yeah. So, yeah, concert season's winding down. Summer is coming to an end <laughs> I know. quickly. It's flown by. Anything left on your to-do list uh, before summer ends? Uh, prepare for football season. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's in the air, man. Yeah. It, it really is. We got a video a little bit later that... We'll kind of get you excited for the high school football season. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, usually towards the end of the summer, though, I look forward to car show season. I mean, it's also ending, but there's some big ones. There's uh, Woodward, of course, is this week, which we'll probably touch on later. Yeah. And uh, a local hometown one in Ordonville is in the beginning of September, middle of September. So yeah, try the, to get to a couple of those. The downtown Lake Orion uh, car show got canceled uh, because of weather. I'm hoping they're going to reschedule it. Mm before the summer's over. And then, yeah. of course, Gowling has uh, the Super Cruise right. in about a month. So mm -hmm. well, car cruises can go into September yeah, a and bit. take advantage of some of that weather too. Right. Yeah, Especially with the terrible weather we've had this whole summer. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, gosh, it's been pretty busy lately, uh, out and about covering a lot of things happening in the community. Uh, talk about summer coming to an end. The uh, library's uh, summer reading program just came to an end and they had their big finale uh, at the library outside on the beautiful property they have over there by their reading garden. Mm. Uh, kids and adults uh, read all summer long. I think their goal was 600 minutes of reading and uh, they became eligible for prizes and you can see they had a raffle on the grounds and handed out all kinds of cool prizes to uh, to the kids that took part. And then they had a magician, uh, Cameron Zavara, uh, apparently travels the world with his magic. I think he told me he's up in Lansing, but uh, the kids had a blast and uh, he put on a good show. So uh, it's uh, that went by quickly. It seemed like I was just covering the kickoff to their summer reading yeah. program. And now here's the finale to the summer reading program. So uh, kids, I hate to say this to you, but uh, summer's <laughs> winding down and school's gonna be starting yeah. really, really soon. Uh, enjoy it while it lasts. So, yeah. Uh, other things that were going on this past Sunday uh, was a big p uh, picnic in, mm. uh, in Friendship Park. And there's an organization that only recently received their 501c3 status. Uh, it's the AU Special Needs Foundation. Mm. And they had their first ever picnic at Friendship Park. It was really well attended. Uh, there was food and activities and raffle prizes and entertainment and uh, lots of fun. Anthony Grappito, who's a local magician, mm -hmm. uh, who's opened up for Jim Gaffigan and all kinds of big names. Yeah. Uh, he was there and it was really great seeing the reaction of the, the kids that were there uh, to his close-up sleight of hand magic. Right. I mean, he was blowing me away mm -hmm. and these kids really got a big uh, kick out of it. Yeah, I've been uh, so, to a couple of his shows before. It's, it's really good. Yeah, yeah. And he has sort of a theme in his shows of uh, uh, mental health awareness mm -hmm. and that sort of stuff. Right. So as you can see, they had face painting and, and all sorts of stuff going on at the picnic. And uh, coming up for uh, the, the foundation, they have a Trunk or Treat in October. Mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, going to be taking place uh, about mid-October where the kids uh, go from car to car and trick-or-treat out of the trunks of cars. Last year they held it at United Methodist Church in downtown Lake Orion. I assume they're going to do the same. And then uh, in the spring they do an Easter egg hunt. And since they got their 501c3 status, they have a couple of big fundraisers planned mm -hmm. 
for 2024 that they're uh, trying to get some, maybe some sports names, some big names mm. to come in and kind of awesome. help out. So we're looking forward to uh, seeing what uh, the AU Foundation is going to be doing. If you want more information about them, visit AUSNF, stands for uh, AU uh, Special Needs Foundation dot org. So they're doing great things in the community. Uh, also, what else? Oh, park groundbreaking. So we got a, we got kind of a last second call here at ONTV saying, "Hey, can you come down for our park mm-hmm. groundbreaking?" We're like, "Okay, what's that all about?" So it's on Baldwin Road near Pasadena Road, and a bunch of dignitaries got together and broke ground on this empty lot. And I found out that that lot has some pretty interesting history. Uh, that whole area uh, is uh, also known as Gingelville mm-hmm. to the residents that live in that area. And Mike Gingell, who's an Oakland County uh, uh, board member, uh, his family roots uh, take place in Gingelville, named after his family. And there was a Sunoco station that stood uh, near that property for a long time. It only recently got torn down when they widened. Uh, Baldwin Road, but there's a picture of it going way mm. back. That looks like it's probably the 1940s. Yeah. Um, but lots of history in in Gingelville, and we have a map uh, that shows what the park is going to look like, or some plans there where the pathways almost look like a tree yeah. uh, coming in off of Baldwin Road into the park, and they got different kinds of trees planned for the area. So it's really going to be uh, a green space. Um, that parcel of land at one time was sort of a farm. Uh, Mike Gingell and his family lived in the house that was directly behind the groundbreaking, and they farmed that piece of property and mm-hmm. grew corn and all sorts of stuff. And so it's kind of cool that instead of developing it and putting you know, some commercial building on the property, they're going to keep it as public green space. Right. So yeah. that's kind of cool that mm-hmm. they're doing that. Yeah. yeah. I like when they somewhat preserve historic areas. Yeah, and, and because they do that, because Orion Township preserves green spaces and stuff like that, they got a grant for that park from America in Bloom, which distributes money from CN uh, Railway, Canadian National mm. Railway. They have the tracks that go through Orion right. Township. So they have a grant program to reward cities that have the tracks going through them to beautify that area. Mm. So. Uh, only 10 of those grants are given out, and uh, Orient Township has gotten a grant two years in a row now wow. to beautify that space. So mm-hmm. that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome. So now another major event that recently took place uh, is the Big Rig Gig. Mm-hmm. 20 years of the Big Rig Gig, uh, and they went all out. Yeah. Uh, the uh, Parks and Rec Department who puts that on, and Jennifer Vesna. This year, they teamed up with the Chamber of Commerce, who provided uh, 10 additional food trucks to the layout. The Chamber had traditionally had their own food truck festival. It was right here at the right. Orient Center. Mm-hmm. Um, they decided to combine the event with the Big Rig Gig, and it really worked out well. People yeah. were able to get food. Every truck had a long line, mm-hmm. and it worked out really, really well. Plus, in addition to the Big Rigs, uh, several helicopters yeah. landed on the property. The big surprise I actually called was the the Army Chinook helicopter that they brought in. That was spectacular. That, Those have you? Did you go in it? Because you were there, right? No, I shot inside it, but I didn't walk through it. It was pretty crowded. There were oh, a lot yeah. of families going through. It's crazy going in. I've been inside of one before, um, and it, yeah. it's incredible. It was amazing. The families loved it, and as sort of an added bonus, I was surprised as I was walking through the grounds. Uh, Orient Township had all their fire uh, equipment and everything there. So I walked up and approached one of the firefighters and I said, what's the status of the new fire chief? Because Chief Rob Duke had left Mm -hmm. and they said, new guy's standing right over there. And so I got to meet the the new uh, fire chief. Uh, His name is Ryan Allen and he's... Uh, there's a little interview with him in this piece that I put together on Big Rig Gig, so enjoy. On the evening of Friday, August 4th, dozens of trucks, tractors, and emergency vehicles gathered at Friendship Park for Orient Township's 20th annual Big Rig Gig. It's estimated that more than 1,500 families came out to the free event, making it the biggest and best big rig gig ever. About 21 years ago, 
I had a baby boy who loved trucks. <laughs> so that's, I was looking for a new special event. Waterford had this event called Touch a Truck and I'm like, oh, let's check it out, see what it's like. I stole the idea and 20 years later, here we are. Every year it gets a little bit bigger and a little bit better. I don't know if I'll be able to get better than a Chinook and the Oakland County Sheriff's Department helicopter. And How can you top that, Joe? How does it get better? But every year we come up with a better idea. This year we added food trucks. It's just every year businesses, they come to me, they want to come. I'm not going to turn them away. And here we are with the biggest big rig gig ever. For the 20th anniversary, Parks and Rec teamed up with the Orion Area Chamber of Commerce to include 10 additional food trucks, which turned out to be a huge hit with visitors. This year, the, for the third annual Food Truck Festival, we have partnered um, with Orion Township Big Rig Gig. And it is super successful. We have 10 food trucks out here today. Every single one of them has a long line, and the people in the pavilion are just enjoying big time. So it's a great collaboration. In addition to the big rigs, three different helicopters landed at Friendship Park, including this CH-47 Chinook out of Selfridge Air National Guard Base. Well, I mean, we're all, when we're all, when we're little kids, we want to do like cool stuff like this. So I'm happy to come out here and uh, show them that uh, there's uh, fun things to do when they grow up. Although um, when you're a pilot, you never really grow up. So. <laughs> it's like you're playing G.I. Joe, right? Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> There's a lot of a lot of paperwork and behind the scenes, but uh, it is fun to come out and do the do the good stuff once in a while. The Lake Orion Police Department has been involved with the big rig gig since the beginning, and this year they brought with them a wide variety of vehicles. The biggest thing we're trying to do is the joy of the kids. Um, the public, sometimes I with the kids, they're scared of us. We don't want them scared of us. They, we want them to approach us about anything and everything. And this breaks that barrier and, and uh, opens up a relationship, that type of thing. Anyone venturing over to explore the Orion Township Fire Department's vehicles had a chance to meet brand new Fire Chief Ryan Allen. The Chief was a former volunteer in Orion Township before moving to South Carolina and Oklahoma. He returned to Orion Township to begin his new gig on July 31st. I think it's a great event. We're seeing a lot of people out. We're able to welcome the public in. Uh, other community, uh, other places. So it's been really nice. It's really nice to see the community come and rally. It's nice to see everybody be able to get out and couldn't ask for a better day to do it. Looks like you brought the whole fleet out. What did you bring out today? We did. We've got uh, ambulances out here. We brought an engine, a ladder truck, and a command vehicle so that people can see what their tax dollars are, are going to work for. Because this is what we're all about, Joe. Um, look at the families, all about the families young families with kids, older families. I mean, there's there's some just moms and dads here. You don't have to have a kid to be here. And everybody's smiling, everybody's happy because what's better than a, a park full of trucks? That's why we do it. It's really about bringing families together. Orion Township Parks and Rec will continue to offer family-friendly events throughout the summer, including their outdoor community garage sale on August 19th and concerts at Wildwood through August 22nd. For more information, visit orionparks.com. From Friendship Park, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ONTV News. <music> So that's always a lot of fun. Even I look forward to the big mm -hmm. rig gig. There's so much to see and do there. And it was a huge success, 20 years. Yeah. And the number that I mentioned as far as the cars coming into the event, I, originally they told me there was like 1,500 or something. Uh, they revised that number to like 2,400 cars wow. came to the event. So it's their largest turnout ever for yeah. the history of that event. So it's pretty cool. Uh, joining us now are some representatives of the Orient Arts Center. We have the director, Holly Nicosia, joining us on set. Definitely. And we have Stephanie McIntyre, who is the event programmer uh, for the uh, mm -hmm. Dragon on the Lake. Yep. All right. Biggest weekend in Lake Orion, <laughs> yes. I think. Hopefully. Um, you guys go all out to celebrate my birthday that weekend. <laughs> oh, and I appreciate it. Nice. Every year for my birthday, I'm at Dragon on the Lake. Um, but it's a blast. I look forward to it uh, all year long. So what's new and exciting uh, plan for Dragon on the Lake this year? 
Uh, so the festival this year is Thursday, August 24th through Sunday, August 27th. And on Thursday, we're kicking it off in the Dragon Pub with a country night for the first time. So we've never featured country in the Dragon Pub before. So that's <laughs> something that we're looking forward to. We're going to have line dancing and Rob Stone, who is a DJ at YCD. Um, and then Ryan J is going to be our main act that night. So we're really looking forward to having a country act and everyone coming out and trying line dancing and wow. <laughs> their cowboy boots and hats if you have it. <laughs> All right. We're so featuring that as started. like a ladies' night too. Is that still the plan where mm -hmm. ladies get in free? So. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So we're hoping for a big Thursday night and just to kick it off and get us started for the weekend. That's great. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, a big official send-off for the uh, four days of fun, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and then on Friday, I know one thing that I take uh, part in, I shoot video every year, is the uh, the lighted boat parade on Friday night. I assume that's a go, that's going to happen. They sort of tie it into the events. What's uh, recap Friday? What's happening on Friday? So on Friday, the event opens at 11. So Friday is 11 to 7, and we have a kid zone and an art fair and a marketplace and a tiki bar and as you mentioned the lighted um, boat parade at 8:30 in greens park that night mm -hmm. um, so we'll have activities all during the day and then we'll have the dragon pub open up at night and we'll also have the lighted boat parade at greens park what's going to be uh at like flint and broadway and all that downtown you're going to have vendors returning and all that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we have a really fun mix of artists this year um, and you know, small kind of merchant type like honey sellers and homemade dog biscuit companies and some really unique vendors that are going to be out there selling all weekend. That's great. We'll um, have our favorites there, the potters, and then we're <laughs> actually bringing music onto the street to, while people are enjoying shopping. You can listen to music and just um, have that fun last of the summer atmosphere <laughs> before we're all buckled down in the fall and winter. So. That's right. Yeah. I know as I wander uh, the downtown area, usually the Art Center has a tent there with some uh, pottery uh, throwing and stuff yep. like that. So you're going to be well represented too? Yep. We're actually going to have a spot in the market um, where we'll have our live demonstrations. I'll be on the wheel for some of the weekend, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, well, that'll be our info booth where people can check in to sign up for classes, how to become a member, and then see the live demonstration. And then in the kids zone, we're gonna have our free craft in tie-dye station. So we're gonna be in two different um, spots during the festival. So we're looking forward to kind of just being in more than one area, um, you know, when we get there, it's kind of hard to, you know, do everything and when we're stuck in one tent. So I'm excited to be in both locations this year, along with everything that's going on at the lake too, so. Oh, definitely, yeah. yeah. Is there gonna be anything going on in the Art Center or does that close down for the weekend? The Art Center is just kind of like our, our home base. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> don't come in there if you're, <laughs> if you're looking to uh, be, walk safely. You know, it's, it's pretty crowded and we kind of use that as our swing space. We're, you know, vendors can you know leave things and um, our tickets and everything that is behind the scenes will happen at the art center. That's great. Yeah. What kind of food can we expect uh, all weekend? What do uh, we got? <laughs> <laughs> we have a Jamaican food food truck in our tiki area Ooh. called Reggae Foodie. Mm -hmm. um, we have nothing bunt cakes. We have some fudge. We have lemonade. We have Kona ice. And then in the Dragon Pub, we have the Your Food Dude food truck and also Jets Pizza. And then at Greens Park, we're going to have some smoothies and also Sick Pizza, which is a new um, truck in, in Oxford. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that just opened up. Yeah, yeah. they're really good. Yeah. Oh, like, okay. Yeah. Yeah, they are. I've, I've had their pizza once. Yeah, yeah. It's great. We've had it a couple of times. <laughs> they're not too far from my house. So <laughs> we've gotten it a few times. And then, of course, the big draw on Sunday are the Dragon Boat races. I understand uh, opening ceremonies take place at 930 in Greens Park. And that is a big deal. How are we doing? How are we doing on uh, dragon boat races? Uh, what kind of? How many teams do we have? Do you know? We're uh, doing the Saturday races again this year as well. So on Sunday we'll oh, that's have high school. The high students? school will okay. be back, and we have um, about eight teams that are competing from Lake Orion and Oxford, Clarkston. So that's going to be a really fun day too. And then on okay. Sunday we have about twelve teams that are competing. Um, and you know, you mentioned the the opening ceremony. So there'll be a few heats, and we're, we're you know looking forward to seeing who will be the champion this year and get the big trophy. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to remember who's the defending champ. Do you know who won last year? Was it the the BYT? It was BYT in Oxford. Yep. All right. 
Uh, we we have... need to bring that dragon trophy back to Lake Orion. <laughs> we need to dethrone them. We do. <laughs> we do. <laughs> Who's going to step up to the challenge? Yes. So there's what 20, 20 people per boat. Is that the idea? And talk about what the day is like. I know are the Tycho drummers returning to mm -hmm. kind of kick things off. That's always neat to see. Yeah, the Tycho drummers drummers will be there, and we've um, partnered with New Day Foundation. They're going to be our um, cancer nonprofit organization. So we always have the ceremony at lunch where we sell the flowers and yeah. it's a really moving ceremony. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to be a part of that, which we're looking forward to this year. Um, and then, yeah, the teams will just be racing all day. We have Tyco drummers to kick it off and um, hoping for good weather as always. Yeah, right. <laughs> Awards <laughs> will be in the um, Tiki mm -hmm. uh, bar this year afterwards. So um, after the races, everyone's encouraged to come back and hang out, play some um, yard games and get together with your friends, invite people out to see the, the awards, which are all handmade by the Art Center again. This oh, year nice. we're making ceramic um, medals for the winners. So we're kind of just putting our spin on bringing art into that portion of the festival also. That's, That's cool. great. Yeah. Now the, the whole thing sort of started, I don't know how many years ago, with chalk art. Mm -hmm. Is that going to be returning this year? Talk about that. Yep, so Chalk Art is um, on Saturday this year. We're doing a one-day event, and um, the sign-ups are pretty good. We have a good mm -hmm. um, round group of participants from youth, team, and adult. Um, and Stephanie can cover that a little bit more <laughs> about the prizes. We have, um, It changes a little bit every year. So Yeah, um, it'll be on uh, Broadway between Flint and um, Shadbolt, so mm -hmm. that'll be where it'll take place. And um, there's $1,000 in prizes that the different levels are competing for. Um, and she mentioned the different team names and even within the youth groups we break it out into like high school and middle school and elementary school so that's fun that they're competing yeah. against kids that are their own at their own level. So do they have to register in advance and, and they get assigned a, a space to, to draw? Mm -hmm. Yep that's they are. Awesome. Um, there's a, I want to say three spaces left maybe so if anyone wants to hop on and snag up those last spots there's a couple left still. Yeah. And we got some really great sponsors too for that area. It's always fun to, to see who comes out and supports each different area of the festival. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the chalk art blows me away every right. year, you know, all, all ages. And as you walk up and down the street and you see the beautiful mm -hmm. works of art, it's, it's really, really impressive. And like you said, hopefully there'll be good weather and those mm -hmm. won't get washed away. It's kind of <laughs> sad when they put all that effort into it and then it all gets washed away. So. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. That's going to be fun. And then, like you said, there's an award ceremony to kind of wrap things up mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the festival. Now, you said Tiki Bar. Is it is it the Dragon Pub or the Tiki Bar where the awards are going to be taking place? So it's at Tiki this year. Oh, it is We're moving Tiki up there okay. just to make it um, closer to the kids zone too, okay. um, which they're going to be right next to each other, and you can kind of move through both spaces. Um, so it's just more conducive for families to have their kids there and be able to do both and we're just trying to make it a bigger um, better family event um, on all all the days so yeah. um, we have some really great things coming to the kids zone and um, Eugene Clark will be there doing his show and it's going to be um, bigger and better than mm -hmm. than last year I think um, so we're excited to see that all take place especially moving um, Tiki and kind of like incorporating it into one bigger space where you can just move about and you know yeah. have that whole festival experience and the two lots together. Yeah. So awards are going to be handed out for chalk art in a number of age groups, right? Uh, they usually hand out awards for lighted boat, best mm -hmm. lighted boat and all that. And then, of course, for the for the dragon boat races, there's team spirit and all. And then, of course, first, second and third. So, mm -hmm. yeah, there's a lot going on and kind of a fun way to bring it all to a close. Yep, mm -hmm. and best costume too. We always best encourage costume. people yeah, to yeah. get their gear together and have a good team costume going and that's one of the awards too. Yeah, that's always fun yeah. to see. And then the, the drummer mm -hmm. always seems to be the crazy one of the team. Like <laughs> they're always dressed up really yeah. elaborate. And there is a best drummer award too yeah, for yeah. the <laughs> individual on the team that has the best drummer. That's exciting. And they are that's, always the most exciting fun. person it's to a see. Specific personality type. Yeah, you can point out the drummer. <laughs> so if there's still opportunities to get involved or if someone just has questions, what are some sources they can go to to get their questions answered? Um, you can go to dragononthelake.com or email info at dragononthelake.com. We are still looking for volunteers. So if there's any high schoolers that need hours or just anyone in the community kind of looking to pitch in and help, we would love 
we would love the assistance at the event. We have people at our info booth or helping with kids crafts, all sorts of different tasks on all the days, so that would be great. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned the country music on Thursday, but there's also music in the Dragon Pub on Friday oh, yeah. and Saturday. Who's uh, performing on those nights? We have Square Pegs and um, Sunset Boulevard is on Friday, Square Pegs is on Saturday. So they're both 80s bands. One is rock, Friday is uh, 80s rock, and then mm -hmm. Saturday is 80s pop. So yeah. Madonna and Prince and Michael Jackson and all of that. <laughs> yeah, I, I see Square Pegs just about every year and they always <laughs> put on a, a good show. show. The uh -huh. tent is packed, everyone's having fun. Mm -hmm. uh, I might pull out my members only jacket that I have hanging up in my closet. Do it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, really get into it. So, so much to see and do that weekend. Yeah. And talk about, and we'll kind of wrap up on this, talk about how Dragon on the Lake benefits the Arts Center. So Dragon on the Lake is our biggest fundraiser for the year. It helps us bring art into community and um, be able to bring crafts to all the, you know, big rig, hopefully um, community events where we can bring art to the, the children in the area, but also it helps fund our um, instructors. Uh, you know, we're a nonprofit, so this helps us pay um, instructors for our classes and maintain our buildings. We have the two locations now, which is our downtown gallery, which we've um, partnered with um, Boy, uh, sorry, the scouts over the weekend, they've done some upgrades and renovations to help us with that. So that location's, you know, thriving. And then we have our studio on Clarkson Road where all of our classes are. Mm -hmm. So these fundraisers are, are really instrumental to helping us keep those both going and being able to offer classes and, um, you know, open the art center up to the community as much as possible. That's so, awesome. Yeah. Do you have your next exhibit planned, your, yes. uh, or are you too focused on Dragon on the Lake? <laughs> no, I always have those uh, uh, exhibitions <laughs> in the back of my head. It's actually my favorite one coming up. It's Portraits and Pottery. Oh, yeah. And that uh, the opening opening is September 22nd, okay. and artists have until September 8th to apply for it, and that's all on OrionArtCenter.org, how to register to become part of that show. So. And there are cash prizes, there right? There are, yep. yep. That's awesome. Yep. So if you're out there, if you do portraits or work in clay and pottery, yeah. you have a chance to win some, some yeah. cash. All mediums and you know age levels and yeah. skill level. We like to open it up to the whole community. That's what we're really focused on at the Art Center is just bringing art into our community and getting as much creative um, you know, cultural experience to everyone. Awesome. Mm -hmm. and, and the Art Center has its own website, Orient Art Center. Is it .com or .org? .org. .org, yep. yeah, yeah. So orientartcenter.org, dragononthelake.com mm -hmm. for more information <laughs> about all the exciting things that are happening uh, in two weeks, a week from this weekend. Yep. So really excited. All right. Thanks for coming down. I appreciate it. Thanks for having Did me. Did you miss Thank anything? You. Anything you want to? <laughs> no. What day do we need the birthday cake? Is that Friday or Saturday? <laughs> That's Saturday. Saturday. Oh, okay. I'll, uh, I'll make okay. sure to make okay. point of that this yeah. <laughs> year. I feel bad I didn't know in the past. <laughs> <laughs> so. Most of the time, I'm usually on a on a pontoon on the lake with the lighted okay. boat. So oh, okay. not a bad way to spend right. my birthday. Nice. So I can't complain. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for having us. Yeah. Thanks for All coming right. down. Uh, where are we going? We got the concert yes. clip that we have uh, from the LL gazebo. Uh, the pairs uh, from the recent gazebo concert in uh, Children's Park in downtown Lake Orion. Like I said, uh, those are going to be coming to an end. Uh, August 30th is one ton trolley. But uh, before then, uh, check out this clip from the pairs.
There you have it, the pairs, which apparently is a trio. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, as you can see, that, that clip was uh, recorded at 20 Front Street. Uh, normally, they're at the gazebo in Children's Park, but if the weather doesn't cooperate, they, we have that awesome venue, and the performers move into 20 Front Street. And, uh, yeah, great program. You can watch that on our local channel here at Owen TV, or you can see it on YouTube in its entirety. Uh, be sure to check it out. So, yeah. yeah. Only a couple left, like we keep saying. Yeah, so. just a few more. So get out there, and uh, you got the Wildwood and the Gazebo Concert Series over at Children's Park. Um, as summer begins to wind down, our th thoughts start turning to football. Mm -hmm. uh, the high school football season is going to be kicking off very, very soon. And from what I understand, the Dragons are kicking off the entire high school yep. football season with the game at the Big House. Yep, they're the Michigan. very first game this year. Who are they playing? Uh, Stevenson. Stevenson? Yep. Yeah, so uh, what a way to start off the season, mm -hmm. uh, hoping for big things from the Dragons. Yeah. Um, our our home opener is Oxford. Yes, and which is going to be a fun be one. There. Yeah, and uh, the battle for the double-O trophy, which is always exciting, always fun watching that rivalry between Orion and Oxford. And I think for the last 
two or three years, the away team has won the double O. Oh, all right. So Lake Orion's looking to break that trend this year. <laughs> That's painful to win the trophy on, uh, or to lose the trophy on your own turf. Right. That's, that's wild. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, we're looking forward to the season. Our ONTV cameras will be there. I'll be out on the sidelines running up and down trying to keep up with these young fellows. And um, recently things sort of unofficially kick off for us when uh, Rochester High School hosts OAA Media Day mm -hmm. where representatives of all of the 22 teams that make up the uh, Oakland Activities Association, they all get together, coaches and players, and kind of talk about the upcoming season and recap the previous season. And uh, the energy in the room is just electric because uh, like they said during the, the presentation, everyone's zero, zero. Yeah. And uh, so anything can happen this season. And uh, so Sammy Terramina, host of Between Terraminas and OAA Now, uh, that's like his Christmas. And uh, yeah. we go out there and we shoot video and do interviews. Uh, he tries to interview all 22 coaches. But this piece I put together, uh, we focus on just the coaches that make up the OAA Red which is the division the Lake Orion Dragons are in. And we're hoping that the Dragons are going to take that division this year and make it into the playoffs. They did, yes, uh, last year by just the skin of their teeth, but they lost in the first round, didn't they? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So let's hope they make a return to the playoffs. And let's take a look at this piece uh, we put together from OAA Media Day at Rochester High School. On the afternoon of Friday, August 4th, players and coaches representing the 22 teams that make up the Oakland Activity Association gathered at Rochester High School for the 9th Annual OA Media Day. Rochester head coach Eric Vernon welcomed those in attendance and introduced the keynote speaker. High school football coach John Harrington. Harrington won 443 games and 13 state championships at Farm Hills Harrison from 1970 to 2018. He's the winningest high school football coach in Michigan history it was inducted into the Michigan Sports Hall of Fame in 2001. I'm telling you guys, they go so fast. That year goes so fast and suddenly the year is over. And you look back and say, man, I could have done more. I should have done this, I should have done that. Right now sitting here, you got the chance to do everything you want to do. So don't take any reps off. One last saying that I like, as the season goes on, when you win, you're never as good as you think you are. And when you lose, you're never as bad as you think you are. So you just go and work hard for the next game. Have a great season. Enjoy playing the greatest game ever invented. Thank you. Following Coach Harrington's inspirational message, representatives of all 22 teams that make up the OA were invited to come up and address the media. The OA is made up of four divisions, the red, white, blue, and gold. The Lake Orion Dragons share the red division with Clarkston, West Bloomfield, Rochester Adams, Oxford, and Stony Creek. Following the press conference, I had a chance to talk to some of the coaches about the upcoming 2023 season. All right, here we got Lake Orion assistant coach John Blacksock here. Coach, um, obviously, you know, you look at Lake Orion, who was loaded this year um, on both sides of the ball. So talk about that here for a minute. Yeah, you know, we're really excited. We've got a lot of, a lot of guys back that uh, have been through the battles the last two to three years. Uh, we're excited about the young guys that are coming up, some of the freshmen from last year and sophomores that will be with the varsity. And, you know, we, we hope that the scoreboard works out on our end more times than it doesn't. But uh, as coaches, we're just really excited because it's such a fun group of kids to be around. They've got great energy. They've got great attitudes. And their work ethic has been outstanding. Talk about your defense and special teams. That's been one question mark. A lot of people look at with Lake Orion. How is that going to look? Yeah, you know, I think you'll see some new faces, um, but we're excited about it. You know, I think we're going to run really well on, on that side of the ball this year. Defensively and special teams, you know, we'll, we'll move well, and we're going to try to keep things pretty fundamental and pretty basic so that the kids can just play fast. What is the expectation this year, Coach? Uh, expectation doesn't change. You know, it's, it's always the same to win the OAA Red. That's number one goal number one expectation and then to uh see how much we can improve each week and become the best team that we possibly can i got the coach of the cats coach jack line here coach um we talked on the podcast recently um how's everything been for you everything's been good you know we have, we've had a good off season um 
we were further ahead than we were last year. You know, we, we were back to ground zero this year uh, and able to build um, towards our team and towards football more. Um, you know, last year we spent a lot of time as a staff and as a group making sure we were all in a good spot mentally, um, getting guys there and present, um, you know, because it was a hard year last year. So this year we were able to start from ground zero and just start building. What is the expectation this year, Coach? I like this team. Like I said on the podcast, I'm only looking at week one, and I like our matchup against Eisenhower. Um, this is a group that will just keep getting better over and over and over again every week, every rep. So, um, I, you know, to me, it's just, as far as this team will take us, um, I like our odds. I got the coach of Clarkson Wolves, Justin Pintar, here. Coach, um, last season you made the um, Division um, One state semifinals. Um, how, is, how has the offseason been for you guys? Uh, we've had a really good off season. You know, we try to take advantage of the the days that the MHSA gives us, and I, I think we're way ahead of where we were last year at this time. Um, you know, the coaches have put a lot of time in. Players are more comfortable this year having the same staff um, back for year two. So I, I think from last year to this year, we're we're definitely ahead of where we were at this time last year. What is your expectation this year? Um, you know, I think at Clarkston, the expectations are always to, you know, compete for a league, um, win districts, win regionals. I mean, that, that's kind of the bar that it was set by, uh, you know, Coach Richardson over the last several decades. So um, th that's where we always have our expectations, you know, and, and we know that it's not easy to do that because this league is one of the best in the state. Um, and obviously the teams that we'll see in the playoffs um, are very good as well. But th those are always our expectations going into the season. I got the coach of the Lake Show, Coach yeah. Jack Hilbers here. Coach, um, obviously we were on the podcast a couple weeks ago, yeah. so talk about the Lakers. Um, talk about what you expect with the Lakers this season. Well, you know what? I just I just expect us to go out there and compete. Like, uh, if we set it up there, as, as did a lot of other people, the league is so deep, it's so challenging, the level of coaching is, is so high that, uh, you know, we know if we go out there and compete and get a chance to, to play in Week 10 and beyond, that we're going to be ready for whatever's out there. I got Coach of Fear the Veer, Tony Vitrino here. Um, Coach, um, last season, a lot of experience. Um, how's everything been this year, this off season? We're clearly much younger. We got we only have two starters back on D, and you know Parker's gone, and his brother's gone, and a lot of our leadership left. And but they created a standard of work ethic, and you know we heard a lot of the coaches talk about today. Our young guys are going to grind, and you know Brady's and, and Mags are going to lead us, and we're going to try to compete. The Dragons open up the 2023 season at Michigan against Livonia Stevenson. Kickoff is set for noon. The Dragons won't be home until September the 8th, which is week three, as they take on Oxford at Dragon Stadium. From Rochester, I'm Sammy Termina, ON TV News. So there you go. Uh, Lake Orion is hoping to get revenge on Clarkston, who knocked him out of the playoffs last year. Yeah. Uh, Clarkston lost in the playoffs, and the uh, the team that took it all in Division One was Belleville Belleville uh, over Caledonia. So mm -hmm. uh, let's hope the Dragons go deep into the playoffs this year, and uh, we'll be there with our cameras. It'll yeah, be fun. and uh, according to a lot of OAA people, they say Lake Orion has a good chance to uh, make a run this year. It might be Lake Orion and uh, West Bloomfield for Ooh. top spot in the red. Um, All right. But West, West Bloomfield is one of those teams that's almost always there and, and yeah. tough to to shut out. So, yeah. But Lake Orion and West Bloomfield had, have had really good matchups the last, I don't know, three or four years, actually. Yeah, there was the one game uh, on the football preview show they were talking about it. I think it was West Bloomfield, Lake Orion, when it... It, the game was interrupted by lightning, mm -hmm. and so they had to continue it yeah, the, the following day or it was something. For overtime. Yeah. <laughs> so for overtime, they line up at what, like the 20 yard line or something, mm -hmm. and they kept scoring and scoring yeah. and scoring. It was one of the most thrilling, exciting finishes to a high school football game I'd ever seen. Yeah. Yeah. So let's hope for more of that this year. Really exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of football, we're going to bring back something to ONTV. Uh, the ONTV uh, Fantasy Football League. You excited? Uh, no. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> we uh, Are we at 10 teams, or do we still have an opening? Yeah, well, we technically we have an opening, but we do have a, a backup plan for a 10th team that wouldn't okay. be able to make the draft. But yeah. we would like to have all 10 teams there if possible. Yeah. Um, 
So technically there's one open spot, but we do have a, a backup plan to All fill right. that spot. So we're going to go live with our draft, and then we'll do weekly updates uh, to see who did what and who beat who mm -hmm. and uh, who scored the points. And if you're into fantasy football and you don't want to miss that, that's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. So you got your strategy uh, ready to go? We're going to do a traditional a snake draft. So yeah. who, uh, who do you think is going to go number one in the draft? Um, I think it has to be Justin Jefferson. I, th I think he's kind of the safest pick, and a lot of people, when you go number one, you try to go somewhat safe for the most part, I, I would say. Um, it's different from years past where it, it used to be running backs oh, for a yeah. long time. The whole first round would be running backs. Because yeah. uh, most of the time running backs are the more scarce position, so that's why you usually want to take them early. Um, but it's kind of flipped the script the way that offenses are being run these days in the yeah. NFL. That wide receivers are becoming more and more valuable. Yeah, and there's a good possibility that maybe Mahomes might be a first rounder, you think? Uh, personally, I wouldn't do it. Yeah, yeah. But there is a case to be made for it, and quarterbacks are another position that usually aren't drafted as highly, but that's another one that's been creeping up in uh, rankings lately. So guys like Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, they're all that top tier of quarterbacks. So yeah. they could potentially. Yeah, it's going to be fun. I'm excited. Yeah. We're talking football. Uh, something else I get excited talking about are cars. Uh, we were talking about car shows earlier. Uh, this weekend is one of the biggest weekends, if not the biggest weekend in the Metro Detroit for car buffs, is uh, the Dream Cruise. And I really get excited about Dream Cruise. On Friday, I'll be at the ribbon cutting. Uh, this is last year's ribbon cutting. Uh, if, if you didn't know, uh, there's actually sort of an official kickoff for Dream Cruise in Ferndale where it all began on Nine Mile Road in Woodward. They cut the ribbon and then they have uh, an emergency vehicle parade with uh, police and fire and vintage trucks and cop cars and it's a lot of fun. The sirens are blaring and they go up and down Woodward to get things officially underway. Even though, if you're on Woodward anytime this week, you will see cars <laughs> yeah. cruising up and down Woodward all week long. Yeah. Uh, but things officially get underway on Friday night, and then I'll be camped out over by Dugan's Irish Pub on Saturday. I'll have my folding chair ready to go and just sort of watch the cars uh, drive by. I have a group of friends that own uh, TV and movie cars. You could see a couple of them in that shot, the Monkey mm -hmm. Mobile and the Batmobile and some other cool cars. You'll see them going up and down Woodward. Um, but it's something I look forward to uh, every year. Uh, Jay Leno came to town last year. I don't know who's going to be coming <laughs> to town this year, but uh, it's something I look forward to. Do you get into the Dream Cruise at all? Oh, do I? <laughs> Where um, are you going to be? I don't, you know, it, it's been hard with uh, work and just married life that it's it's been tough to make it out we did go to the dream cruise last year um on saturday because my wife had actually never been wow never been to the dream cruise so we had to go on saturday um personally as many times as i've gone saturday isn't my favorite day to go mm -hmm. um it's almost too packed for me um because i like to drive a car down there but i also want to see the cars yeah and there's so many cars you can't you can't see everything. That's why it's best to pick a location, camp out, mm -hmm. and watch the cars go by. Yeah. Now, you have a classic car. Yeah. Talk about your car. Um, I have a 68 Torino yeah. GT. Uh, it just was given to me, actually, for my 30th birthday from my dad. Wow. Um, it's been in our family for, we were trying to figure it out. It's like 16, 17 years now, which is crazy to think about. Mm -hmm. um, and so when we took it last year, we actually stalled in the middle, <laughs> the middle lane of Woodward. <laughs> that um, was you. So that was kind of funny. But uh, we got all that stuff fixed up. We've gone to a couple car shows. I'm going to try to maybe make it out Friday night this year. Um, I know one of the things that I liked in the past, actually, was um, going with my parents. We would go um, on, like, a Wednesday night. The mm -hmm. middle of the week seems to be, like, the perfect wheelhouse where you can cruise, but, like, you can park for a little while and see yeah. just enough cars where... It's a good time. Yeah. I have my Mustang convertible, but I don't like sitting in that bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's usually a little lot that I go to every year that raises money for charity. And you pay like 10 bucks or 15 bucks, And I park in that lot. I leave the car there. 
pull out a chair, sit around with my friends yeah. and watch the cars go by. That's how I enjoy Dream mm -hmm. Cruise. I was going to say, I think going with a group is definitely a fun way to do it. Oh, yeah. Everybody, everybody has their own favorite car. Nobody tends to like the same cars. And if you're a fan of basically any kind of car, you will see it at Woodward. Yeah, if you, exactly. You'll see from like Lamborghinis to old 50s cars. To, to rat rods. Exactly. To modern cars and mm -hmm. everything. In Crazy lifted Jeeps and vans and... Yeah. VW Beetles, <laughs> everything you could think of. And for the third year in a row, uh, the M1 Concourse in Pontiac mm -hmm. is going to have their dream show on Friday. And I think I think it carries over into Saturday, but uh, it kicks off on Friday. And what's cool about that is if you, if you are part of the M1 Dream Show, you can park your car there, kind of show it off, but they get they allow you to come and go. So yeah. you have a place to park your car, but you can leave, enjoy the Dream Cruise, come back, and hang out with people at the M1 Concourse. So mm -hmm. that's that the third year in a row that they're doing that. So yeah. that's a lot of fun. Right. So lots to see and do this weekend. I'm really looking forward to it. And uh, as a matter of fact, there's some other events coming up this weekend, and I'm pretty sure we're going to cover those in this week's Quick Hits. Uh, put together by our co-worker, Becky. Let's see what's on Quick Hits this week. The free summer concerts in Lake Orion continue this week. Don't miss the Dirk Kroll Band tonight at the Wildwood Amphitheater. The concert begins at 7 and the doors open at 6.30. Tomorrow night's LO Live concert will feature Danny Nichols. The concert will be held at the gazebo in Children's Park in downtown Lake Orion. The concert begins at 6.30. Don't miss Orient Township's largest outdoor annual garage sale this Saturday at the Orient Center. The sale will take place in the parking lot from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. The Antique Toy and Comic Expo will also be taking place inside the Orient Center on Saturday, also from 9 to 3. Buy, sell, or trade comic books, collectibles, and memorabilia at this annual swap meet. Parking and admission is free to both events. Holly Oaks ORV Park is participating in the free ORV weekend, August 19th through the 20th. Michigan residents and visitors can legally ride the NRI designated routes and trails without purchasing an ORV license or permit. For more information, call 248-653-0710. Mark your calendar for the Dragon Wellness Festival on Saturday, August 19th. Embrace your inner dragon during this Teen Mental Health Awareness Day. The event will take place from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Civic Center Park located at 2525 Joslin Road. The event is free, but pre-registration is preferred by calling 248-391-0304 or by visiting orientparks.com. Now let's take a look at this week's weather. Wednesday's forecast is calling for sunny skies with a high of 79 and low of 47. Evening storms on Thursday with a high of 75 and low of 56. Mostly sunny on Friday with a high of 74 and low of 57. Mostly sunny again on Saturday with a high of 82 and low of 63. And partly cloudy skies on Sunday with a high of 87 and low of 65. Well, that's it for this week's ONT Quick Hit. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. So it looks like a beautiful weekend for yeah. the outdoor garage sale. Inside the Orient Center is the uh, Antiques Toy and Comic Expo. Uh, and then just down the road at Canterbury Village, they're having their first ever yeah. Comic-Con and Cosplay Con. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I was at Astronomicon earlier this year, back in March, and I ran into Keith Aldrich, who owns Canterbury Village. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what are you doing here? And he says, we're thinking about doing a Comic-Con this year. Yeah. Well, here it is, this weekend. And they have some celebrity guests that are going to be there. Butch Patrick, who played Eddie Munster on the old Munsters TV show, uh, he'll be there. And usually, wherever he goes, he brings his Munsters coach with him. So that'll be cool if he brought that to Canterbury Village. And Ric Flair, uh, the, the Hall of Fame wrestler, yeah. will be there. And you said you're excited about I'm, a couple of guys. I just found out yesterday that this was <laughs> even going on. And uh, there's going to be a couple Power Rangers there. Yeah. Um, Walter E. Jones, he was the original Black Power Ranger. Um, he goes to almost every convention. He's He seems like a great guy. So I've always wanted to meet him. So I might have to go there. And also in the, I think it's the second season, I don't know, third season maybe, um, Steve Cardenas, he would, took over as the Red Ranger eventually in the Power Rangers. And being a 90s kid, that was my show yeah. for my entire childhood. Oh, definitely. Now, Saturday, there's so much going on. 
but the Comic Con at Canterbury Village runs through Sunday. Mm -hmm. So I'll be busy with Dream Cruise and some other things going on on Saturday, but I'm hoping to get over to Canterbury Village on Sunday, uh, shoot some video, maybe do some interviews at Canterbury Village. I already put in a request for mm. uh, press re uh, credentials. So, nice. um, so yeah, looking forward to that. You know what else I believe kicks off this weekend is the Michigan Renaissance Festival. Yeah. Uh, have you ever sure. gone? Uh, yeah, I've gone a couple times. Um, it's not necessarily my forte, um, but it's a, it's a cool thing to go and see. Like if you've never gone, yeah, I would suggest going because it's it's very interesting. Um, Funny enough, the thing that I actually liked the most when I went, uh, they did a, a whole glass blowing uh, yeah. show, and I sat there for an hour and a half, two hours, just watching guys blow glass. Wow! Because I I think it's so interesting. I like the jousting, of course, and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But the main reason I go to the Renaissance Festival is the food. I like the <laughs> turkey leg, and one of my favorite things is the Scotch egg. Have you ever had a Scotch egg? No. It's a hard boiled egg wrapped in ground sausage and then covered in a layer of breadcrumbs and then deep fried <laughs> and it is delish hmm. it is awesome so yeah. i doubt if i'll be able to make opening weekend because there's just so much going on but it runs throughout uh yeah, the rest of september. august and september and i think into october so uh, there's plenty of opportunities to get your way uh down to holly and uh, check out the Renaissance Festival, and that's that's always a good time. So hopefully I'll get down there before it, it comes to an end. And every week is like a themed week. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's a lot of fun. So, um, so yeah, man, uh, your calendar's got to be full. So much yeah. going on. It's crazy. <laughs> and then, like we said, like with sports and school starting back up, it just it feels like it's never ending at this yeah. point. Back to school, mm -hmm. uh, man. But school brings football season, and that's one of our favorite times of the year. Yeah, yeah. So uh, summer winding down. We're going to be winding down this episode of Orient today. Uh, we'll, we'll be back in a few weeks. I don't think we'll be back in two weeks, uh, but we'll be back in a few weeks with another episode of Orient today. Uh, thanks to our guests who came down from the Orient Art Center. Uh, we're looking forward to dragging on the lake. And uh, we'll see you on the next live episode of uh, Orient Today. Thanks, Joey. Of course. See you.